So we've come onto our long stretch of dirt road now. We're gonna let down the tires on both the caravan and the vehicle, just to stop that rattling around and you know protect the tires a little bit. Nice, so we're all ready. Sorted for a nice long dirt road drive to get to our campsite in Balloch. Today has been quite an experience with the towing. It's actually been very pleasant. I'm definitely getting used to it. I'm getting used to the reversing and stuff. We've had a, some overtaking maneuvers. We've had to do some petrol stops. We've had to do quite a couple things and I've just I'm definitely feeling the confidence a lot more now with the caravan behind me. It's not as much of a thing anymore that I'm having to consciously worry about all the time. The vehicle is pulling so beautifully and handling so well that you, you don't even really feel the caravan behind you like on these gravel roads. So you do need to kind of stop sometimes and just think about it and be like, oh, where is it? It's still there, <laughs> which, is, which is really nice. But we're close to our campsite now at Balloch. Looks like the weather is turning out really beautiful. Can't wait to get there and set up. We'll catch you guys that side. So our adventure continued, gaining more and more experience with the Vagabond Rogue with every twisting gravel bend re-experiencing roads I've traveled on before in a completely new way. But what was even better was the absolutely incredible sunset painting the highland landscapes around us in all sorts of astonishing shades of green and gold. It was truly one of the most breathtaking drives I've done in a while. And I had no idea what had awaited us at Balloch, but I'd heard good things. And that was enough for me to get out there and see it all for myself. Even if it meant cruising into the campsite in the dark. It would mean waking up to a spectacular surprise in the morning. So we arrived at Balloch. The sun was just, just going down and it got dark quite quick because we were right up in the mountains. Beautiful, beautiful drive in. I must be honest, it's one of the wildest places I've been in a long time, but today we're going to have to explore it and see. We're camping right by the river. Stunning little spots of grass. We've got water. We've got everything we need. Hopefully we can get on the mountain bikes and get out exploring today. What a lovely little paradise we got here for ourselves. We're all suited up. Time to go and find somewhere to have a little bit of a cycle. So I think this is going to be a great little spot to start our cycle. Not going up that hill up there, but <laughs> cycling down here and then we'll cycle our way back. We know it's about uh, five k's there, maybe seven k's there and about seven k's back. So we'll try to do 10 k's and he has a sneaky little Land Rover hiding inside her workshop here, where Land Rovers belong. <laughs> Got my Superman outfit underneath my Clark Kent. Cool, let's do this. Done about how many Ks now, Andy? Five? 5.4 Ks, so, and we've just turned around now, so we'll do about a 10 K cycle. It's not a lot for experienced mountain bikers and cyclists, but for us, I mean, Andy, when's the last time you cycled? A while back. A while back, yeah, the last time I cycled, I mean, since I started recently, was like when I was 16. So, uh, we don't have the best bikes, but we're getting out and we're doing it and we're enjoying ourselves and the scenery around here is beautiful and it's a completely different way to experience the environment because everything is so big. I'm used to being in the car and you just get used to the fact that like you're in this metal box and you look out the window and it's pretty but you don't get a sense of the true sense of scale. 
and uh, something that's what was really enjoyable about going for a hike doing the cycling you just get to experience this whole beautiful place in a completely completely different way Nothing like cooling off your feet and your calves in the ice cold mountain water. Oh, love it. Our whole morning's adventure was only the driveway into Balloch. We hadn't even scratched the surface yet. But it's just a special kind of beautiful out here with unbelievable rock formations all around. So, Trying to do all of the cycling and the kayaking and all of this fitness stuff. It's obviously not super duper easy for me, but I kind of came to the realization that I want to feel agile and comfortable in my own skin and active and be able to do stuff, you know. And it's difficult to get there, you know. It's years and years of uh, bad decisions and not looking after myself and not caring about myself kind of like put me in this place, but. I'm re working really hard to try and make that change, you know. To try and change my lifestyle, try and own it a little bit. And it's been a hell of a lot of fun. And I've learned a lot of things about myself and about basically how to enjoy the outdoors in a whole new way. And what I found out is the more I do this, the more I've found out that overlanders just love the outdoors. Whether it's cycling, whether it's kayaking, or it's running, or whatever it is. I'm starting to see it's not just about camping, it's not just about vehicles and modifying them, it's about the lifestyle. And I'm excited for the future of Rome Overlanding and where all of this stuff is going to go. Because we're going to be having a whole lot more fun on this trip and for the future of Rome Overlanding. Look what I found. We were taking the bikes off the rack. Obviously, I went over a bump and the brake or something on the bike pushed into the vehicle, dented it and scratched through the paint as well. <sighs> Sad. It's my first incident with the Hilux. <sighs> Quite frustrating. But what can you do? Bit of a wild storm coming in and I'm trying to make this big brunch. Do all the nice things, eggs, toast, chicken livers. Busy building a nice sauce here for the livers. Oh, it's gonna be so, so good. I can't wait. I'm absolutely ravenous after the cycle this morning and the storm is coming in quick. So to get a nice good meal in before the storm comes is gonna be pretty critical. But mm, I'm so ready. Before the storm arrived in full force, we wanted to walk up and check out the other campsite. It's actually built right under a massive rock formation and is one of the most unique campsites I've ever seen. If we had more hours in the day, it would have been amazing to keep exploring Balloch. Storms are brewing. So, tucked away in the caravan, working on some photos and some video. Quite pleasant. <laughs> so there I was thinking, who's going to need a microwave when they're camping? And here we are, microwaving lunch <laughs> for dinner. It, it works. <laughs> Can't wait. Oh, a little bit of pup and chicken livers with bacon. So good. An early start of the day would be key, because we had quite a trek ahead of us to get to our next destination, Hogsback, the famous adventure town. But here's a quick tip when getting ready for your day. Always knock out your boots, because you never know what could be hiding inside. That's a baby baby, huh? Bit of an issue here, actually. We packed up a whole campsite, caravans packed up everything. I go to turn the key on the car, no power. Check the voltage on the battery, three volts. So I don't know if this battery is completely gassed. We drove the car yesterday even. I don't know, there was nothing on on the vehicle um, to actually even use up 
power. I just, I don't know what's happened. So currently I've got the NL5 smart charger plugged into the Jackery and we're gonna see if we can maybe charge it a bit, but it's gonna take hours. So what I need is I need the auxiliary battery to stay off because now what's gonna happen is the voltage on the smart charger is gonna come up to the point where it may initiate the dual battery system, right? And in order to actually be able to charge that front battery, we can't have the, <laughs> the battery system coming on. But what I am seeing here is the main voltage of the main battery is coming up. It's sitting at 13, which means it is actually charging. Now, the main thing to see is gonna be whether it'll actually accept a charge and hold current. Now, we just gotta kind of bring back the battery capacity so we can turn over the motor and maybe get the alternator going. Okay, so what we've decided to do is we're gonna walk up to the farmhouse, get some Wi-Fi so we can contact people. And it'll also give us a bit of time for the NL5 to actually charge because it's gonna need at least an hour or so on there. We're gonna do this and we'll uh, come back here in a bit. This is a huge time delay for us today and all our missions we have, but whatever, life happens. <sighs> so we walked all the way up to the farmhouse and it looks like the owners have left for the day and the Wi-Fi is off, which means we're gonna walk back to the Bucky now, back at camp now. I've taken the NL5 off the battery to see what the voltage is sitting at. We're sitting at about 13.3 volts. I think we're gonna try give it a crank. It's been charging for about 45, 50 minutes, maybe actually an hour if we combine everything. Let's just see. Hopefully we don't have to satellite phone Fricky or anything like that to get them to come out here because uh, yeah, that wouldn't be too fun. Holding thumbs. Yes, baby. I'm very happy that that just turned over. Now I just want to check the alternator and make sure the alternator is charging properly. Alternator is charging, battery voltage is up to 14.2. So we're all good. Now we can just hook up the caravan and we can get out of here. With that minor problem solved, we could hit the road again towards the quirky town of Hogsback. But those clouds looming in the distance might be signs of what's to come. Thank you so much for watching and please remember to like the video if you enjoyed it and make sure you are subscribed so you do not miss out on the next episode. I want to give a massive shout out to my awesome Patreon members for their continued support. Without you guys, this show is not possible. So if you would like to become a contributor to the show, consider joining Patreon and get access to behind the scenes content and weekly live streams. Anyways guys, I'll catch you next week. Cheers.